Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about a controversial topic here, and I've had to kind of backpedal a bit and add details around it because I don't want to mislead people into different paths and ways of thinking, and I'm trying to get as mo I don't know as as well rounded as more well rounded as possible here. But I've made many statements that traders are not quants, and I stand by that statement full heartedly. But there are some nuances behind this, and I think we should point these out. And again, I don't work on the investing side. I'm not a big fan of the investing side for a variety of reasons. Um, but let's add some nuances and discussions around this quickly here as this might change some of your perspectives. This might also support some of your views and might actually encourage you to go into trading here. So let's dive on into this. So first off here, we have to look at this historically. And I think this is the most important, crucial piece here. Um, I was talking to someone who was a quant on a trading desk years ago. And they mentioned, you know, Dimitri, algorithmic traders are actual quants. And I go, I completely understand that. But we have to go back now to a history versus modern. And so historically, when you had quants back in the day here, uh, quants were like full, you call them full stack quants using computer science lingo. They had to do everything under the sun. So you had to be an expert in finance. You had to be an extra expert in computer science mathematics, statistics. So you built the strategies, you had these really good ideas, you looked at them statistically and mathematically, and then you took those ideas and you implemented them into some sort of language here, whether it be Fortran or C or C++, and then you took that and then you actually built a tool with it, you know, with C++ and all that and implementation, and you used it to trade off the strategy. And it makes the most sense here from an algorithmic perspective uh, because it's really easy just to implement and you have a tool and it runs and you're using it, okay? Now, that's how it used to run. Even with non-algorithmic trading, uh, you would have these quants doing this. There are even times where you had like an execution trader. I think that's what they call them. Uh, where someone was actually executing the code and they were, you know, making the decisions, the quick thinking ideas here. And then you had the quant that built the tool and implemented the tool, starting so two out of the three parts. But as we're getting closer and closer to modern times, firms have realized they can specialize and save money and we can get better experts here. So specialization, specialization, specialization. This is the massive idea that has changed the entire world. Uh, again, a lot of this even stems all the way back to like, you know, Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations from 1776. This is not a new idea. This is a very, very old idea here. But when you're running a quant firm, right, they've started to realize it's better to hire someone who is a true expert in math and stats, right? They can just focus on that. They don't need to spend excessive amounts of time learning, you know, like, computer science, both on the software and the hardware side, and looking at all its components. And yes, they do matter significantly. Um, and then they also don't have to think fast. So I made a video about, you know, trading and quants and everything. And I talked about, you know, I like being a quant because quants think slow, okay? I have a problem. I can sit on that problem for weeks, for months, for years. It doesn't really bug me. It actually excites me. And I work through these really complicated problems and you do a lot of math to prove it. And of course, you have to write everything down because these problems are so intricate and complicated. And that's what quants do, okay? I've never been on the trading side on a professional desk. I don't think I would be very good at it. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I would not make a very good trader. I don't think fast. And so when you have quants building strategies, you need to think slower. You need to think methodically. You need to think through every ins and outs here. You need to manage your risk on this. And then at the same time, right, you need a trader to work with you to really execute those and to think fast and look at markets. You know, someone's reading the news. They're thinking in their head, you know, okay, I understand the model the quant built. I get those ideas. And then I need to realize how those are going to impact my actual trades while the news is coming out. Okay, so models aren't 100% perfect. Now, when you get more towards algorithmic trading, the models themselves are almost solely based on statistical assumptions, but you still need someone to monitor and run that that model as a trader. So very two different things. So quants, very slow thinkers. Uh, traders, very fast thinkers. Neither of these positions is good or bad. It's just who you are as a person. It's what you like to do for a job. They're completely two different careers. Now, now looking at this from a historical perspective, as I mentioned, right back in the day, it was very all-in-one package. Many small firms still have this. This still exists. You can still be a quant and an implementation or quant dev, I'll put in quotes here, and trader all in one package. Uh, and you could even be maybe someone who's just like a quant and then they have a computer scientist who implements these and then you might work side by side with a trader or you might even be doing the trading. So there is no definitive answer of, you know, 
only every firm does it this way or every firm does it that way. But as firms have gotten larger and larger um, as training programs, so academically right, quant finance masters are huge today. Uh, 20, 30 years ago, this was not the case. Um, Again, so looking at this from specialization perspectives, you need to have very specialized people. And so having those slow thinking quants is perfect. Uh, The other piece here, as I'm going to mention, is quant dev, which is a whole other career. And again, I don't consider them quants. I'm sorry. I know I'm offending many of you. But realistically, someone with a master's or a PhD in computer science will run circles around me. Okay? That's just how it is. Now, you can say, oh, I'm a full stack quant and I'm just as good. I mean, it's extremely rare to have the full stack and to be an expert on all the areas possible under the sun. But it makes sense for firms to have someone who can really execute this. And I'll give you an example because I think some people think computer science is just programming. And that is very, very far from the truth. Um, So I have friends who have worked in, you know, computer science masters and even like engineering of like CPUs, for example. Uh, And I think it's interesting to point out here. So I had a conversation with the sales rep from AMD, the, the chip manufacturer, and we were talking, they wanted to learn more information about quant finance, how they could better better position themselves uh, for like basically selling product and servers, for example, into hedge funds. So we started talking and we started talking about there's a library inside of Python and Intel would use this or there'd be articles on it at least. Basically, like if you run this package with Intel, it runs in, let's say, like X. So let's say, I don't know, 10 seconds. And then if you run the same package and the same exact code in Python on an AMD uh, CPU here, it would run in the sense of like 20 seconds or maybe 15 seconds. So it didn't seem like a lot, but percentage wise, it was huge. And when you start magnifying these programs up massively, like AMD is like garbage, it's terrible, it's not working. Well, no, that's not true. It's not that AMD is worse than Intel. It comes down to the way that the hardware itself works, right? Intel and AMD had different hardware design and structure. Uh, I believe some of these issues came down to the fact that AMD was trying to implement more secure uh, technology around it. And the package that was written in Python was actually intended for Intel. So it was optimized for Intel processors. Now they fixed it. And I was talking to the sales reps and he's giving me this example here. Now they've fixed it and now it executes basically at the same time. These are things that computer scientists will know. They will understand these very nuanced details of like, we can't run this package on our server because our server is running a different type of chip or it doesn't have enough RAM or something very specific to this system that they have. Uh, Again, you need a computer scientist who really understands this from a quant perspective, right? I don't really care. I have a statistical arbitrage, you know, set up. I'm ready to roll with it. I need to execute and implement. I've tested it in like, for example, Python R, SAS, MATLAB, something that's like a stats language that can do this very quickly. But again, it's not going to execute at like algorithmic speeds. And to do that, you're going to need a low level language like C or C++. So just my two cents here on this, but trying to realize the skill sets are very different. So if you just love computer science, get a master's in computer science, apply to hedge funds, uh, maybe take some finance classes on the side, right? For example, or if you can take some financial engineering classes, take a few of those, but really focus and specialize in computer science to do quant dev. If you want to be a quant, my advice is continually the same, specialize in math and stats. That is the core of it. Again, taking a few finance classes is helpful so you know what you're doing. Taking programming because you have to be able to program and test your ideas in these languages. I love C++. I don't use it at work. I've only used C Sharp at work on like one project. I love C++. I love when people learn it. It just teaches you a lot better programming standards and how to actually program instead of being stupid and just running packages. And yes, I know I use a lot of packages now because it's far easier and I don't need to reinvent the wheel. And realistically, I'm just testing ideas. So I just need to see if my idea works statistically and mathematically. And then we toss that over to an implementation team or a quant dev team to really do the heavy lifting and make sure it's optimized. And then finally here for traders, This really depends on the firm. This really depends on the industry. It is a shotgun approach. My best advice for you, if you have like in your mind, like, I don't know, whatever type of trader you want to be, go and look at those firms that you would just love to work at and see where their traders, like what their background is, what education they have. Some of them are going to have Ivy League, super fancy business school backgrounds, or even like, I don't know, English degrees from like an Ivy League school. That's what they care about. 
Um, again, they're probably looking for fast thinkers. So fast thinkers probably come from, you know, people that are pretty smart academically. So that might be why they're doing that. But there are some quant firms that want people with a quanty background to do the trading here. Now, you would still be a quant. Yeah, again, if you work at the smaller firms, especially, you're going to need fast thinking and slow thinking, and you're needing to specialize across the board here. And so getting a financial engineering master's is definitely a good route for trading as well. But just realizing in the career and in the full spectrum of things, uh, define those goals up front. Know what you really want to do here so you don't go out and get that degree and you love you know, doing math and stats and then you become a trader and then you're like, I'm not using any of these skills anymore, right? It's just something to think about here. So yes, you can be a quant and be a trader, but my general statement to kind of help guide students and people is really thinking about the skills you're going to need for those jobs. Go on LinkedIn, look at the firms that you want to work at, look at their employees that are in those positions currently, and look at their backgrounds. Uh, I think it might shock some of you. Others of you, it might just be like, well, obviously that was what you need. Um, so that's kind of how it is. But that's how I kind of break down the quant realm here. Uh, I made a video a ways back on types of traders. or tw <laughs> So I made a video a ways back on types of quants. I think it's a bit outdated. Um, again, as I mentioned in that video, I'll link it above or below. I pull it from Mark Joshi, and he did an amazing job at breaking it down, especially during his time, and he's an industry legend as well. But I think things are starting to evolve and change historically as we go through this. So even this video in like five, 10 years might even be outdated in the way that we're looking at how quants are structured and how they work with the other teams like quant dev and traders. Uh, it might just change over time. And I, I don't know how it's gonna change, but it's possible it will change to be even more specialized. So anyways, those are my two cents. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.